What's going on guys, this is Dean here. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to build a conversational chat bot with Bubble and ChatGPT's new API that was released. Um, and I really do think there are a lot of use cases with this, um, you know, whether it's something that's, you know, you're building a tool internal to you or your team, or you wanna build something that's customer facing, such as a, um, you know, chat bot to help with sales or support, whatever that may be. I think there are a whole lot of use cases with this. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool how you can leverage both of these tools to create something very powerful, all without really having a technical background. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you guys really quick here what I've um, developed. Again, this is just a very simple interface. To go ahead and ask it something, we can say, what is the largest country in the world? Which I believe that's Russia, but I could be wrong. So you can see we're asking it. And then, um, there we go, we get a response um, that Russia is, in fact, the largest country in the world. But now we can say, what's the smallest? And um, again, it should give us the response of the smallest country in the world without giving it any more context. Um, yep, Vatican City in Italy. So. Guys, you can see here that obviously um, we didn't provide any more context and it was able to look at the conversational history in the past to be able to um, generate our kind of most recent response that we requested, um, which I think is pretty cool. And again, this is a very simple chatbot, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, more so the functionality of all of this. So the first step we're gonna wanna do is install the actual API. Um, the part that connects to OpenAI. Uh, to do that, come to the little plugins on the side in the nav bar over here, and then select Add Plugin, install the API connector, and then uh, we'll just call this, uh, make sure to expand it, we'll just call this Open AI, and then um, click Add Another Call, and this is the actual call that we're gonna make. So we'll just call this Chat. Um, completions. I mean, you can call it whatever you want um, to refer to it. Uh, so let's actually just enter in the, um, the API. Um, let's get the API set up. So this is probably going to be the most technical part of this whole tutorial, um, but OpenAI has done their job and made it very simple for us. If you guys haven't checked out their documentation already, um, come to the API reference and then select create chat completion. So you can see they've given us some example requests. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just copy that endpoint and then um, just paste it here under the chat completions one and make sure that it is selected to post requests because we're gonna, we're gonna be posting data to their system, to their software, if you will. And then select action, um, which you'll see why with, at, you know, with this we can now use it in our workflows. Um, the next thing, let's actually set up our headers. So this is how we're gonna authorize it. And again, they have this part set up as well, really simple um, content type, um, which is JSON. This is just a, um, this is typical of APIs. It's essentially, um, if you're wanting to know, if you're curious, it's the way, um, the format that we're expecting our data in. Um, um, or they that they're expecting their data in and then um, next key is to add the authorization aspect of this um, so um, you can see that um, they have it in this format as a bearer token and uh, it has to be specific in this way and essentially here is where we're going to enter our API key and if you guys don't have one um, to get your API key, you can simply just create a um, your OpenAI account um, and then come in the little right-hand corner here in your profile and click View API Keys. Um, I have one already, but I'll just go ahead and revoke this and create a new one. So you can see it generates you one, and we'll just go ahead and copy that really easy. And then um, let's just paste it. So. Um, when you do paste it, again, make sure you guys have it in this format with a space in between it. Uh, this is just typical of, um, again, typical of the APIs, but 
Um, now that we have our authorization and our endpoint, last thing we're going to want to do is just set up the body of it. So we'll just go ahead and copy that. Again, um, OpenAI has made this very easy for us. Um, so you can see that we're using the new G GPT 3.5 Turbo model, um, which was released a few weeks ago, if I believe. And then um, we actually have the um, kind of the message that we want to send, right? So um, before we get into this any further, let's just go ahead and test our um, our API call. So we can go ahead and click initialize call, and you can see that we have hello in our context, um, in our content. And if you click this little show raw data here in the bottom left hand corner, um, you can see we get a response back saying hello there. How can I assist you? Um, so if you have this, obviously you know you are correctly communicating with OpenAI's system, right? Now we could add whatever content we want to in the back end here, but obviously this is something that your users are going to dynamically input, right? So let's just go ahead and um, remove this altogether. Again, we're going to set this up later in the workflows, but we can just create a dynamic element and we'll just call this um, chat for now. Um, so again, if you wanted to um, do that kind of same thing. We could just paste what we had there in this value. But again, our application is gonna set this for us. And make sure you unclick private so we can access this. So guys, again, the whole kind of purpose of having this um, dynamic field is essentially we're going to try and replicate what OpenAI um, has done with their request, right? You can see that there is an array of different messages. And, um, and for those of you that don't know, I'll try and qu kind of quickly explain it too, is again, these messages are kind of added on to one another. Um, and every time a message is created, it would then add on the previous messages and send that in the request. That's kind of how it has this context, right? Um, and I wouldn't say the token usage is a, a worry here just because um, the tokens are a tenth of the cost of what text Da Vinci of what GPT-3 is, so um, again, not a big issue there, but yeah, so we're essentially going to try and replicate this. Um, so let's go ahead and actually just create our front end really quick, just kind of a mock-up. Um, we're going to have a input field here where the user is going to input their question. We'll say ask question dot 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 and then um, the placeholder, and then we're just going to add a very simple button here called um, ask. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just change that color. I hate the, uh, the default blue they give us. Give it a soft green there. We'll just have that for now take it down a little bit and then next we're going to add a repeating group um, so again this isn't going to be just a simple text output we obviously want to you know display in a list of what the um, you know the requests and responses are we'll just leave this blank for now we'll come back to it once we've set up everything else um, so next let's set up the actual um, the back end of this so if we come to the database we're going to want to create a new thing we'll call it chat um, a new table in the database and in the roles um, we're going to want to create a JSON as a field we'll call this text um, and then also a um, we'll just have one called text which will be just text and then um, we also want to store um, who sent it right the assistant whether it's the user now we could I think the easiest way to do this is with an option set so we'll just call it GPT um, role we'll create that and then um, we'll have system user and assistant system user and assistant and there's a lot of ways to set this up as well um, I know people I know um, projects that have done this solely just having it in the back end um, or even just in the plugin section of all of this um, so Let's go ahead and add one more field. We'll just call this one GPT role and we'll make sure to reference our option set. Um, so there we go. Um, now let's get into the workflow. So all of the workflow is gonna reside in this ask button. 
let's just go ahead and start that. First thing we're gonna wanna do is create a new thing. Um, what's that new thing? We're gonna create a chat um, record in our database that we just created. So now we want to set the fields. We're going to first set the text, which is going to be um, the input ask questions value. We're going to create another one. This is going to be the JSON. And again, we're just trying to replicate what has um, been done here. So we actually can just copy that, I believe, and then paste it, not in there. Um, there we go, user and then content. Except for content, we don't want to hard code this. We want to make this completely dynamic. So we will do, um, again, the inputs value and then for the user, um, we could just do user. Um, yeah, I guess we can just leave it for user right now and then GPT role we will do um, user again, we could just have that as an option set as well, but I think that's fine right now. This next step, this is when we're actually going to send the response to OpenAI. Um, we will do a, uh, we'll search our API that we just created, the chat completions, and then we're going to essentially search for the record that we just created in the database. So we'll call this, um, we'll do a search for the chat and um, yeah, we're going to try and get the JSON. Because again, that's what we created here in this previous step. Um, but also, we don't wanna just get this one. We want to make sure that we add it with all the other ones. So we're gonna join it with, um, we're gonna join it with a comma. And then I believe it's another, yeah, it'll be, yeah, join it. So join it with another comma, but make sure to add a space in. Um, that's just the format that, of the JSON um, request that we want to send it. Make sure you guys have it exactly in that format. Otherwise, you're going to get a um, parsing error. So once we have that completed, then we want to essentially do what we did for um, step one except we want to do it for the assistant, right? The actual person responding to our request. So again, create a new thing. And then for our thing, we'll do a chat and um, we'll have the text. We're gonna do the result of what we had for step two. Um, choices and then um, last, or uh, first item and then message content um, and then yeah make sure to trim this just because they you, you do get kind of some weird uh, responses that are not formatted properly um, and then once we have that again we want to do this with the JSON and it's essentially going to be um, kind of the same thing that we have here we go back. Oh, sorry, we don't want to do it in that. We'll paste that and then we can just leave that as assistant, but obviously we want to um, leave the content as what we did up here. So um, we'll just call it the result of steps two's choices, um, first items, message content. And then we'll also make that trimmed. And then lastly, we'll just set the role to the assistant. And again, we can do that here, but we'll just leave that as assistant now. Um, so pretty much guys, that is it. Um, now let's come back to our front end and um, let's just make this really quick. We'll have a text block for the um, We'll do, oh, make sure guys, for the actual repeating group that we select um, the chat for our type of content and then um, do a search for chat. And we can, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, we won't sort it by now, but 
and then we will create a simple text there um, we'll just make this dynamic and we'll do the current cells chat GPT role whether it's the um, you know the assistant or the user and then we'll actually um, we'll just make this bold and then we will have the actual content oops sorry the actual content of what we want we will make it dynamic and then we will do current cells chat text guys really quick before we uh, test it um, and the if we come back to the workflows and the first step one I had a comma here when I was doing it uh, make sure to remove that because we're going to get a parse error with our JSON so just remove that kind of bit on the end there that I had um, but once that's there we are good to test it um, so I'm going to do uh, let's ask it any question what is the square root of 49 and um, we'll do it step by step but you can see our request and then our response um, which is the assistant so it's going to say the square root of 49 is 7 and then um, I'll put it here and then we can ask it what about uh, 64 you can see I'm getting really creative here but um, so yeah you can see now it's added it's joined all of the previous prompts as well um, that's found in our database so yeah guys that's how to build a very kind of um, simple but fully functioning um, chatbot and if you guys want to see a kind of another video of this maybe going more in depth or maybe kind of making a chat gpt clone with our requests and responses here on the left hand side or um, you know maybe a refresh to um, delete a chat or maybe start a new chat or um, really any questions you guys have leave that below um, and if you guys could like this video or subscribe that would be great as well um, i'd really appreciate that um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, so thank you.